I always enjoy talking to parents about the little idiosyncrasies of their children. And uh, someone recently was telling us <coughs> about a, a nephew of theirs, a, a relation of theirs, who a little boy, when he would sit at the table, <coughs> the plate had to be put directly in front of him. <coughs> so if the place, plate was slightly to the left or to the right, the child would kick up a fuss and would not I'm, not, I'm not eating that, I'm not eating that, it's too far to the left. But <coughs> the interesting thing was, you couldn't resolve the problem by moving the plate. You had to move him on the chair. <coughs> okay, okay, no, okay, a little further. <coughs> okay, now I can eat. All right? Or, uh, I mean, I've seen it in my own nieces and nephews as well, where, you know, the food is served up and they go, I want the blue plate. <laughs> I wanted the, I don't know, I'm not, I wanted the, why did she get the blue, pl I wanted the blue plate, like, you know, absolutely ridiculous things. This is interesting to see how from a very young age, we had this kind of need to satisfy certain desires, even though they may be completely superfluous. Uh, it's very, it's, it's interesting because that kind of idea we carry into adulthood, very interesting, or very sad, dare I say, when you see someone who's suffering from an addiction, okay, Addiction, it's like this self-imposed prison. They're doing something they know isn't good, but they do it anyway, and they hate themselves for doing it, but they can't stop. They're choosing to do it, yet they're not free to it, free from it. It's, it's, this, it's, it's a self-imposed prison. It's, it's, it's hellish, and yet it's being chosen, and yet it's not what you want, and yet it is what you want. It's awful, absolutely awful. And this very same can be said of, of sin. Most of the time, we know that sin is wrong. You know, like, even, you know, I don't go into too many details, like, but we know sin is wrong. And most of us know sin is, like, when we do things that are wrong, no one says adultery, it's absolutely fantastic, strongly recommended, like. You know, I mean, like, no, no, one, no one would say that. So, I mean, like, they may kind of try to glorify aspects of it, but no one says, yeah, it's a great thing to do, it's wonderful. You know what I mean? Uh, so we know sin is wrong, and yet we can be kind of a slave to it. Now, uh, why am I saying all of this? In biblical language, uh, there are two main cities that were associated uh, with a suffering period, if you will, for, for the people of Israel. That's uh, Egypt. So when there were, when there were slaves in Egypt, to be freed from Egypt, from, from the Pharaoh and all of his demands and the slavery down there, and Babylon. These countries, uh, these were, yeah, time, time periods, epochs of great suffering, of great slavery for the people. But the church fathers have always interpreted those not just as kind of physical slavery, we can't do what we want, but also uh, as, as analogies for the slavery of sin. So to be freed from Egypt, to be freed from Babylon means to be freed from sin. To be, uh, you know, to return to Babylon doesn't mean go back to a, a physical place, a city, or a, or a country. Uh, it means to go back to sin, right, and to be to be dragged down to this to slavery. Okay, so again, pulling all of this together, when we hear about the great city of Babylon being hurled down, yeah, like historically. Uh, Babylon is no longer a superpower, just like every other superpower. They've, they've all, they, they will all, they have all, or they will all pass away. But that's, that's, that's somewhat irrelevant, or it's not so important as uh, the spiritual reality that all sin in our lives, our all tendency towards sin, through the power of God, can be cast down that we should never choose to be going back to places of slavery, even if it's chosen, even if it's wanted, even if it satisfies part of a, a, a desire, albeit a base desire in our hearts. These aren't the kind of things that make us happy. And these reigns or realms of, of evil, of sin, will eventually be cast down. They do not win. At the end of the day, they do not win. They are not victorious. The, the power of, of, of the enemy of, of Satan is limited, and will expire. It will run out. Like it, it, eventually, he will. His, or should I say, the victory of the Lord will be made manifest. Vector, eventually, his influence on earth will cease. And I 
can't wait for that day. I'm not sure if it's going to happen in my lifetime, but it will be if, if we don't see it here on earth. Hopefully we'll, be, we'll have a front row seat from a slightly higher place and uh, be able to see the Lord's victory made manifest then on earth from heaven. So it, the, the, the power of sin, the power of, 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 of the enemy, it's limited. God's power is not. God's power is not. So whenever we're struggling against any sort of a temptation, any sort of a weakness, any sort of a, uh, an addiction, we've just got to remind ourselves like, that the Lord, the Lord is more powerful than all of this. Isn't it interesting that when we look through history, every, every great nation from your Egyptians, Persians, Babylonians, Genghis Khan, Romans, Greeks, maybe now the, the States and the EU, China, Russia, USSR, back in the day, all of these superpowers, including the EU and, and the States, though all those superpowers will eventually pass away. No superpower has ever survived, ever, ever, in the history of mankind. So they'll have a they, they, they'll rise, but if they get ahead of themselves, they get too cocky, they will fall. Us too, you, the EU as well. And yet you have an immortal soul. So you as an individual have a soul that will outlast all of these great superpowers and empires. Isn't that incredible? Like, so when, when, that's why I, I was saying historically, the historical aspect of this, of this isn't so important because it's temporal, it, it passes but you don't. Once you've been created, you have an immortal soul that will never pass away. So your soul is either here with you on earth, and when you die, your soul separates itself from the body, and then your soul is somewhere else. But you, as a person, as a personality, as an individual, still exist. You will outlast every empire that will come and go. So long, when, the em when the EU is spoken about in history books, you will still be around somewhere. Hopefully, a little further north of here. Killy bags. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully someplace peaceful, joyful, where there's no more sorrow and no more pain. We outlast all empires. And that's why, primarily, the Lord is speaking about spiritual realities here, because these are the most important. They don't end. So we ask the good Lord today, for the good of our soul, for our eternal salvation, that we may be strengthened with all the necessary grace to turn our backs on sin, to turn our backs on even self-imposed slavery, addiction that's not from God, that we may use the powers that we have, the powers of our intellect, the powers of our will, to always choose good, to choose God, to choose heaven. <laughs>